Our talk show called Nicola Valley Talk is broadcast every Thursday, 7 p.m. on our Experience Nicola Valley Facebook page. I'm your host, Jano Howarth. I'm the arts and culture blogger for Experience Nicola Valley. And tonight, we're going to discuss a music journey that includes our local open mic night. Our special guest tonight is musician, music and performance technician and open mic host, Denise Kearney. Denise has lived in the Nicola Valley with her husband, Al, who is also a musician for years. But Denise also spent years before she moved here engaged in the music and performance world. Denise worked as assistant to the film and video prof at Simon Fraser University, worked in the theater department, was involved in the technical setups, light and sound. She got her technician papers in electronics and has run all the equipment for film crews, all aspects. Now Denise finds herself recording on her own camera and getting our open mic videos ready to post on Facebook and YouTube. Besides, besides hosting, performing, and coaching. So, let's get Denise on here. Here she comes. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Welcome to Nicola Valley Talk. Good to see you. I don't see hey. a lot of you these days under these circumstances. Usually we would be in touch at least once a week at open mic, if not more. So uh, um, it's unfortunate how things are going right now, but we're managing to stay in touch in other ways, which I really enjoy. So, <laughs> so how are you doing these days? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Yeah. Missing our hug. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So we're going to ask you some questions tonight and uh, mm -hmm. and give people a little idea of who you are and, and what you do. I know that you're pretty well known in the community, but there's all kinds of people who uh, aren't that familiar with uh, who you are and what you do and how much you've done, which I'm is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, not really, but I know what you mean. So we've had lots of chats about your work related to the music and performing world. And tonight, I want you to share some of your journey. So please share with our listeners a little bit about who is Denise Kearney. Okie dokie. So I was born in England, came to Canada with my mom and dad when I was a little girl. I lived in Toronto for most of my formative years up until nearly adulthood. I have a sister my dear sister Michelle my mom and dad are passed away but they had a really long and wonderful life I loved my parents very much I have a son uh, most of you know about that his name is Chris he's married to a beautiful lovely lady they live in Switzerland and I have my very first grandchild um, I'm married to Al and did I forget anything well there's a lot more in between, but that's a little bit of a synopsis. Yes, okay. The lots uh, lots going on there. Nice to know a little background. Oh, um, yeah, I forgot, to say, I forgot to say, moved to the Nicola Valley yeah. um, 15 years ago. And I've always been a city girl. Uh, thought I'd love to live in the country. Yes, it's definitely my my place. I love it here from the minute I moved here. I have slept like a baby and loved every day of it. Yeah, and you live in a in a beautiful place, surrounded with the uh, the hills of our Nicola Valley, so it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, tell us about your music journey. What are some of your earliest music memories? Well, it's really weird, isn't it? When you try to think back on your life, and I think I think back to from the earliest recollections that I have was just music, just filled with music, our home. Um, my dad was a musician, he played the guitar, my mom sang, um, I took dancing lessons, and so much of my life revolved around music, um, to the point where I think I mentioned to you previously that uh, um, anytime, you know, there was an available stage and all it had to be was anything where people were watching me I'd burst into singing and dancing and the thing was the whole family was kind of like that my sister ended up being 
that way too. So music was something that, I don't know, I was just drawn to um, and obsessed with my whole life. I, 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 would, I would sing along with anything and um, begged my mom to let me join the church choir or at least try to join because uh, the choir that I wanted to join was one you had to audition for. And um, I got into the choir and I got paid. It was my first paying gig was singing Great in job. the church choir. Yeah. You know what I sang for my audition? Do you know it? No, I don't. Christian soldiers. <laughs> so you know that song? Yes, yeah, so it's arousing. Yeah. Rousing piece, yes, yeah, no, I know it for sure. So that was where my music journey started. I mean, it was just like so part of my life. For I just I can't even begin to think of a time when there wasn't music. We would go for journeys. My parents would take us camping and so forth, and we'd all clamber into the car. And then from the minute we started driving, it would be okay one song after another and we'd all be singing and then when we got to our destination we'd set up the tent and then people would get out the flashlights and that would be our spotlights and we'd all take turns getting up there and doing little songs and musical acts light so, and sound from an early age exactly. That's great. So yeah. i know it's just it's kind of weird because i don't know if everyone grew up that way so consequently I was drawn to every type of music, and when I became a teenager, um, I just continued that. I lived in Toronto, which was a phenomenal place for for um, for music. I uh, you had the Toronto Pop Festival and all the love-ins, and I, I mean, I'm just like an old old hippie. I became a hippie when I was a teenager, and I've never gone back. So just so you know that. But I just listened to every type of music, and I kind of settled on some that I preferred, which is uh, kind of, I really love blues, and I just love rock and roll, and Rolling Stones are kind of my favorites. But I'm very um, eclectic in my tastes, if that's the right word, because I love every type of music, and in, indeed, um, opera, symphony, you name it. I just love it all. Uh, I didn't, um, I started to play the guitar when I was a little girl, but it was just too much work. And um, you know how you are when you're little, it's kind of hard to knuckle down and do stuff. And I was more interested in dancing and so forth and singing. So uh, it wasn't until um, quite late in life, actually 10 years ago, that I decided to yeah. get really serious and learn how to play the guitar. And I've just embarked on that journey. So after about 10 years, I feel uh, at least I can do a little bit of a accompaniment. And um, and as I, say, uh, as I said to you, the thing with an instrument is it's really, really, really hard to learn. It takes an incredible amount of work. And one has to be willing to put in the hours to learn how to play. And you combine that with actually having to try to sing along with mm -hmm. playing the guitar um, or any instrument. Um, it, it is a challenge and, and, and it does take a lot of determination. Lots I, don't think of I, I don't think I mentioned to you that when I was in high school, I played the cello. So, and that was really fun too. So that was sort of my journey. Did I sort of forget anything? No, that that's, you might want to that's know great. About I'm just thinking of, of uh, how, how instrumental you've been in uh, encouraging people that we've been in touch with. But before we touch on that and yeah. get up to the, uh, the the current part, just tell me a little bit more about your how you uh, developed your expertise in, with the t whole technical aspect because you really do a lot of work in that area. Well, so over in life, because some of your experiences back when to get to know the light and the sound and and the filming and the uh, performance and encouraging just working like you do in the in behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera the way you do you know, again um it was just sheer sheer will okay i knew what i i love to do and i just went ahead and i did it i i think i i was thinking this may sound a bit weird, but my mom was a very nervous person, and she had a lot of phobias, right? And I I love my mom. She's wonderful. I miss her so much. But I thought, I can't be that way. 
And mm -hmm. so consequently, I tried to overcome all of these phobias. And I think that was one of the steps I took towards. So it's a little bit intimidating and scary to kind of get your way in and say, I can do this and I'm, I, I can... I can learn this thing, but if you go ahead and you actually apply yourself and you keep on trying and you keep on offering, um, people will let you have a chance. And so that's kind of what happened. <clears throat> um, I just got in in little ways, learning how to use equipment myself and hanging around um, the people in the film department and the video department. And pretty soon they let me do one job and then another job. And pretty soon I was the technical assistant and um, I would help people in the AV department in, at SFU. I worked in the theater. Um, I worked for the, they have resident, they have residents and professors there and I was assistant to both of them. Um, it didn't really, it didn't really hurt that um, uh, my ex-husband, who's the father of my son, Chris, was um, uh, heavily into video too. So I ended up getting the job. And so contacts are important too. So you can use that. Just remember Absolutely. who you know really, yeah. really, really helps. And uh, we, we did a lot of filming. Um, it, back in those days, we didn't have portable video like you do now. Uh, it was the portabax weighed about, oh, I don't know, 100 pounds. So lugging those around was a lot of work. Um, what was a lot of fun was the student filmmaking because we were using uh, 16 millimeter film cameras and uh, doing all the things that you'd see on, on the sets uh, with uh, lighting techniques. And I just pitched in and I just offered, I just made myself available. And that's how I kind of learned. You just have to, you have to put yourself out there, take a risk, go ahead, say, I can do this thing and give it a try. And that's what yeah. I did. I just, I just kept offering and people let me try stuff. And then I found out, Hey, you know what? I actually have an ability for this. So that's yeah. what happens, but yeah. you have to have still doing it with that attitude. Yeah. Just yeah. trying new yeah. things yeah. to this day. And, and a desire, you know, you have yeah. to have a desire for, and I just did, I just, anything to do with film, video, music, um, all type of art, um, not necessarily, like my art is a musical or, or, um, or dancing art, but anything in those, in those realms, I just loved. And well, I offered Tell myself. us about your, your, tell us about your involved, uh, tell us about your music experiences here in the Nicola Valley. Well, you've been here yeah, for lots of yeah. years. You've played music here. You there were we learning go. your guitar. There we go. So that just builds on top of what I was saying. You have got to take a risk because can you imagine how scary it is? If, it, if it's one thing to play in the basement and with my husband and learn a couple of songs and learn how to play the guitar. But just imagine then somebody says, would you please come and play in front of people? Oh yeah. my goodness. So you don't know how many times I've gotten up there, in my opinion, made a complete idiot of myself. But then you walk away and you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pick myself up, dust myself off, get back out there and do it again again and yeah. that's what happened so um i remember when robert gribelinus was in charge of doing music here she would ask us all the time and so we played in the square and we played at the park and um played at the country music hall when the walk of stars people were doing stuff they'd ask us to come out and yeah. and al and i would play and it was always terrifying but it was so rewarding to say i did that thing i did that Thing I was so scared of being in front of people, putting myself out there, taking that risk, and doing that thing. I mean, we only, you know, we only have so much opportunity to be to be able to to do things that are rewarding. And so, take advantage of every opportunity that you get, and don't be afraid of failing because it just helps you learn. Well, I know that I had bumped into you socially in the uh, community and it was, uh, I knew you a little bit, but
but uh, I, it was, uh, I think, Michelle Pierce when we were doing the coffee house at the Country Music Hall of Fame, and uh, and you and Al came to play, and it was amazing. I loved it, and uh, and then Michelle suggested that we, because we were getting going on the um, the open mic, and Jeremy was involved in hosting and getting you on board, which has just been really great. And thank goodness too, since Jeremy left, and you have uh, have taken taken over that. Um, really good to hear about your experiences in the community uh, playing elsewhere because I know that you still do that or at least we have up until uh, up until now when everyone's taking a bit of a break um, but I'd like to uh, I'd like you to tell us about your involvement with the Nicola Valley Community Arts Council open mic program at the Kikuli Cafe because we've had quite a journey over the last uh, uh, two and a half years being the crew there and you taking taking charge really playing a, a good part in uh, in that endeavor mm -hmm. or Friday Friday nights at Kikuli <laughs> yeah I must admit, I miss it, which is a surprise yeah. because um, yeah. I won't say I had to have my arm twisted um, to get involved um, because at the time there was, we had the Bluebird Cafe going and I, I felt really drawn towards that. That was at the Country Music Hall and it just seemed like it was just too much and maybe not the way I wanted to go, but uh, I really felt a kinship with Jeremy uh, and having met you now or having met you back then and then knowing you now for all these years I I just realized what an incredible individual you are and I've just, I just value our friendship okay I just want to say that but with Jeremy I saw him as um, he didn't really he was he really needed our support and um, he wanted to do this but he wasn't quite sure what to do and so yeah. I thought okay well no one really knew I had done all these kind of things before you know organizing and whatnot so I said okay well I'll help you get it going and then but I don't want to be involved right but what happened was when we got everything sorted out and in place I realized it was a whole different it was a whole different thing. Um, the community, the camaraderie, the yeah. friendships I made with, you know, musicians. Yeah, I'd known the musicians before, but it was so vague because there wasn't really any personal interaction. And now that um, I was dealing with the individual musicians and encouraging them to come out and play and developing, like, friendships and associations yeah. um, regarding what were their music likes, what were their habits. Um, I found that I really developed this strong bond with with the, the many of the musicians that I did not have before. And I just felt a need to keep that going. And in addition to that, which again was kind of a really big surprise because you know me, I'm not a really social person. But um, I feel a lot for people. I, I, I feel a lot of um, love for them. And I want them to kind of, you know, have a good time and feel good in this world because there's so much, so much meanness in this world and people are unfriendly. I want to be friendly and make them feel wanted and part of our group. And so that's what happened. We developed this group of people that came to open mic every Friday. And if you were there, you felt that warm, you know, fuzzy community spirit where we yeah. all felt we knew each other. And you know, that is a hard thing to not like. And yeah. I really, I really, really miss that. Yeah. And really, 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 really enjoyable. Yeah. You're a very yeah. welcoming person yeah. there. So yeah. the people who walk through the door, we yeah. have regulars, we have people who come just now and then yeah. and we would have visitors coming walking through the door from other places other and places. Uh, and you would encourage them ask them right away if they had instruments or hand them one and get people to play so yeah. it's it's uh, it's been good so not just the musicians and i really have seen you help musicians there mm -hmm. um uh, sort of uh continue on the roads that that they are on and uh, next steps. Yeah. absolutely yeah so that part of it just that natural music coaching that you've uh, that you do i find to be really great at our at our open mics for sure 
yeah, yeah. missing him um, for sure. Thing that I love yeah. about open mics is I don't know how much time we've got, but because I am a nerd and a geek, and I love anything technical, setting up all the equipment, messing out around with all the sound stuff, the microphones, um, and now we're thinking about getting some lighting. You know, those are right up my alley because I just love playing around with that kind of thing. Um, so there's that on top of it too. But I think that going back to um, whether it be the the customers of Kakuli and the people that watch open mic, the audience, or the musicians. Um, I really did want it to be an environment where everyone felt wanted because I've been envir in environments as a musician where I felt really unappreciated. And you know what? Anybody that gets up and sings in front of people or plays in front of people, they are putting so much of themselves out there. It's really, really important yes. to appreciate them. Yeah, and have them feel like they're coming back. Well, and on the the, the sound and light end, uh, definitely yeah. concentrating on the sound. I remember uh, going up to Camelot's with you and and Jeremy and picking up that the the, the first set that we were able to get through the the Arts Council and so that's something that we have in the community now and uh, and you've added to it along the way uh, we now have like Jeremy isn't here anymore but we've got uh, Amrita Huja as our sound guy who stays involved even now uh, with us which is great but he's been a really consistent part of what we're doing and you and Amrit have worked together to try to develop uh, what I understand from the musicians is a pretty good sound system for a yeah. <laughs> For a we for a, a little place like the Kikuli Cafe, yeah. <laughs> I miss Amrit. I miss you. I miss our hugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do have some. We definitely have some ideas on how we want to move forward, which I'm pretty excited about. So, with you going away for the the winter, and uh, and you returned just as we were needing to shut down. We had one final open mic where we were being very careful, having uh, different uh, um, uh, mics and and uh, sound equipment for the just two musicians that we had come in. We ha we were being very careful even in the audience and talked mm -hmm. about the uh, the COVID-19 what effect it was yeah. going to have and and that was it like you returned to the valley and went into quarantine and now what we've done is uh, I do my best to post a little music either old like some of the old stuff that we've had from open mic in the past and uh, and say hi to people maybe post a little video um, but uh, we we've got some and we miss our people for sure. So it's just, and, and that's just like our regulars, our musicians and the people in the community who might walk through the door. And uh, music is such an important and healing and healthy um, expression and, uh, mm -hmm. and to get by. And here we are all kind of tucked away. So tell me some of the things that you have in mind right now to uh, keep the open mic experience alive. Not quite sure. I kind of got the, that was a lengthy question, but a good one. <laughs> what are um, we doing? <laughs> I just want to, I just want to mention, um, if I may, that I got back into town. Uh, we just escaped from the States. It was help get us out of here. So essentially, I, I've, I've just spent like weeks in stress mode because terror would be a good way to put it, just with all the nonsense that's going on. And things were just getting worse and worse down in the States because there was no impetus put towards doing anything about it. So thankfully we made it home. Um, but I think it, it's taken me until about the last week or so just to feel like I've kind of come down to a place where I can actually um, feel free to be a little bit creative because um, although I practiced on a regular basis because I felt it was necessary and practice, practice, practice if you're learning an instrument or singing or whatever, um, um, I did it by rote because I needed to but now I feel more like I'm I'm into the groove again okay so um, what I'd like to try to do and um, is 
do a live stream and bring in um, our, let's start off with our regulars, say for example, um, like Willard, who is one of our regulars, and Robert, and um, uh, Quaid, and John, and if anybody could figure out how to hook Michelle Etchard up with a way to live stream, we could bring her on, and we could do an open mic every Friday night, um, getting people to live stream, like those things you see on TV when they have those concerts. Why can't we do that? I think we can do that, and I think we have the tools to do that, and I think it would be a lot of fun, because yeah. this is not going to end tomorrow. It's not going to end next week, because I am permanently isolated because my husband suffers from um, uh, primary immune deficiency and he cannot take a risk of getting this disease and I don't want to lose him. And so therefore, I will not be out and about in public. And further to that, in research that I've done, one of the most dangerous ways for spreading the particular um, a virus is in a venue in a smallish room or you know it doesn't have to be that small it depends on how many people are in it with singing because with singing um, I always warn people if you're sitting too close to me I'm gonna spit on you because yeah. you really do have to project if you're singing properly so singing in a closed environment um, is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do uh, yeah. in spreading a virus so I think that going online would be a lot of fun. I think people could get involved. We might get people from further away to yep, come and right. or people that don't want to come out because they yeah. feel like I do, that they can't spread the disease. Plus the fact we have a lot of people that come to um, open mics that uh, are in an, an older age group that are at risk. And they're yeah. probably yeah. not going to want to be coming out and socializing so if we could find a way to help them like mary for example i'm sure her family would uh, we have this wonderful lady named mary that i miss very very much oh, no. yeah yeah so if we could get one of her family to give her an ipad and and uh and show her how to get onto open mic she could come and listen to us yeah so yeah. anyway so that's what i think i think until such time that um things are a little safer then i'm only going to be online and that's yeah. going to be the way it is. And my husband, of course. Yes. Yeah. Really, and so I'm really looking forward to that, of course. Um, what I don't have here is a, a great photo of, of your instruments in your basement all set up, ready to go. And, uh, and we can uh, let people know that uh, we're looking to uh, put something on. It's Thursday night tonight. tonight. Hey? I put one up on the Open Mics page. Get them going. Okay. I put yeah. it all up there. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, a yeah. great photo, and uh, and we're going to um, push this and try it, and like you say, sort of yeah. embark on something that we haven't done before, and uh, and we'll get people to go to the open mic Facebook page. They want to see sort of what we're doing, and we're hoping that'll happen this week. And how else can people uh, uh, um, listen to your music? Denise, tell us how. Uh, uh, where, where can we contact you? Um. Well, um, or see you and some of your music with you and I. Well, it's, look on the open mics page if you want yep, to see mine sure. or anybody else's music. I have a, a YouTube channel. It's it's got it's just under Denise Kearney. Um, you'd have to kind of look, but I've got lots of videos on there of Robert and because um, we used to play with Robert all the time. Missing that, I must yep. say. So um, yep. there's videos of Robert and Al and I and just of Al and I and uh, that's on YouTube. Um, and there's lots of stuff on, as I say, the Facebook page. So that's yep. a cute picture. I see that there. That's, yeah, Here's that Robert. Was that was at the coffee house, not the open mic, but we've got Al there and Robert and uh, Denise and uh, and uh, band members. So we're yeah, that's that's kind of fun. Um, and also, the open mic has a U a YouTube channel where we haven't done a lot of posting over the last no. while. We really needed you for that as well. So we'll have to yeah. get busy and make sure that we're posting uh, uh, some I will of our. Tell you though, the page is really great because it has a whole section with videos. So yeah. Um, yeah. if you just go, if you go to open mics um, in Merit and, and, you, and you click on videos, there's like 
tons of them. Yeah. They keep you amused yeah. for days and days and days. I'm sure COVID will be over by the time you've watched them all. Yeah. Well, let's wrap up. Is there anything else that you wanted to say here, Denise? We've had a great chat. It's been, uh, it's really good to have you on. I would just like to say it's been a pleasure and a delight uh, to be part of the Arts Council. I feel privileged. It's, uh, as I've said earlier, it's a, you know, one of the most happy times of my life to have met you and and consider you an associate. So I just want to say that. I love the Nicola Valley. I'm missing open mics. And I'm feeling like, okay, I'm going to put some videos up there. Um, I hate to promote myself, right? But hey, what the heck? It's Great. all in good fun, yeah. right? And that's, so if, that's what we're doing here, you, promoting love you. you all. Keep the music going. And... Yep. Let's see what we can do Friday nights. Yay, it's Friday night in Merritt. It's open mic nights from my music room. Okay, it sounds really good. So I'm gonna sign off now and I'm really glad we got this little, uh, um, this talk going and, uh, and we'll see you really soon. Um, maybe not in person, that might take a while, but hope to see you uh, on the uh, open mic feed there. So I thank you so. so much, Denise. And uh, have a yeah, have a have a great evening. Okay, <laughs> take care. Thank you. Okay, that's Denise Kearney, and Denise is uh, uh, just in the music and performance world. Our host for Open Mic, and we're taking a break right now, but things are going to get a little lively. So really enjoy, really looking looking forward to that looking to see denise and al go live with their music online soon uh, maybe as as soon as this week i'm your co-host of nicola valley talk it's another program of the experience nicola valley bloggers and uh, check out our um, the bloggers uh, uh, website experience nicola um, come join us every thursday at 7 p.m uh, Pacific Standard Time as we talk Nicola Valley with special guests from the Valley and beyond. Uh, so next week, Nicola Valley Talk co-host Tanya Stewart um, is uh, is having a Nicola Valley Talk, and you can find uh, the guest on uh, our Experience Nicola Valley page. That will be uh, posted soon. And the week after that, I will be back with uh, special guests. Looking forward to that. So remember. Use your creativity in whatever you love to do and take care out there.